there's been a lot of conversation lately about what a summary judgment timeline might look like. And courtesy of James K. Filan, we have a nice, robust answer that we'll take a deep dive into. Treasury has done it with their Utility X airdrop for Treasury holders, that 5% payout hitting uh, wallets today, and Coinbase is launching their NFT platform. The beta just went live. I'll give you a quick peek because I was able to get signed up. But if we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. Let's take a quick look at the crypto market before we dive in. We're down just under a percent on the 24 hour back to 1.91 trillion. Bitcoin still holding over 41k, Ethereum a hair under 3100. XRP is at 75 cents having taken a slight retracement back to a half percent on the day. You can see the rest of the cryptos in the top 10 are roughly flat over the course of the last 24 hours. Now let's take a look at the Coinbase NFT platform. This was just released earlier. You can sign up if you are on the waiting list to the beta. Uh, they did have limited spots available. I had signed up previously, so I do have access here. I thought I'd give you just a quick peek. Really an interesting look to it. I've seen it compared to the Instagram of Web3 was a comment I saw on Twitter that I thought was an interesting comparison. Uh, the way you can see it, you can like and comment on different people's NFTs. You can see uh, last transaction price. So a good start here for Coinbase as they continue to build out their platform. We're seeing a lot more NFT options uh, coming up for displaying and purchasing NFTs. So let me know what you think about Coinbase's NFT platform. If you've had the opportunity to dive into it, do you think this is the right thing for them to be doing to sort of increase their presence in the space? Or do you think this is something that should be left to someone else? I'm curious what your thoughts are. But nonetheless, getting a lot of press there for Coinbase and certainly an opportunity in the NFT space, uh, regardless of our takes on it, there's a lot happening and they certainly want a piece of that pie. Now, if you are not looking at Treasury XRPL, it's worth considering, uh, follow them on Twitter at Treasury XRPL, but Treasury has a very robust platform that they've built out and continue to add functionality to. I'll link up in the top right hand corner the video i made about treasury there's a lot to talk about there and it's a really interesting uh, xrpl project if you are a treasury holder today was the distribution of the utility x uh, airdrop again based on your holding five percent of your treasury uh, amount balance in your wallet uh, distributed out at uh, that 5% ratio in Utility X. So you can see lots of people commenting here and showing some of the payouts they've received. So a really good program and that Utility X will unlock further utility uh, with other features that they're gonna be having like Treasury Academy, Treasury Venture, and so on. So check out that video if you missed it before. Definitely one worth considering, but as always, do your own research. Now, courtesy of James K. Filan, who we reference a lot here, a major pillar in the XRP community, providing a lot of legal information uh, for us from the documents to that legal take here on Twitter. So make sure you follow at Filan Law on Twitter. I'll link it in the video description here, this full thread. But he's provided some answers to common questions that are being had by the community right now regarding the summary judgment uh, timeline. So this is a lengthier thread. It's uh, 18 uh, separate tweets uh, in a row here about what's going on and talking specifically about what has to happen and the timing and everything in the uh, Southern District of New York where the case is being tried. So he's gonna go through in detail. I'm just gonna go through it uh, verbatim here and then we can talk about some potential implications at the end in summary. But this is what he's posted, a summary judgment timeline. I'm seeing a lot of discussion on timing projections for the filing of summary judgment motions and a decision on the motions. I thought I'd weigh in because Judge Torres has a particular and very complicated process that must be completed before the motions for summary judgment can even be filed. 
The point of this thread is to help you understand that this is a longer process than you may realize. First, any party that wants to move for summary judgment has to provide the other parties an electronic copy in Microsoft Word format of its Statement of Material Facts pursuant to Local Rule 56.1 a local rule 56.1 statement is a short and concise statement in numbered paragraphs of the material facts as to which the moving party contends there is no genuine issue to be tried. A material fact is one that must be resolved to make a decision on the motions. The party moving for summary judgment must at the same time provide the other parties any admissible evidence cited in its Rule 56.1 statement that has not previously been produced during discovery. They only have to produce evidence that is admissible, so that would not include documents the court previously said the parties did not have to give to the other side. For example, Brad and Chris's personal financial information or the Easterbrook notes from the other perspective there, the SEC side. Then the party opposing the motion for summary judgment has to reproduce each entry in the moving party's statement and then write its response directly beneath it. After that, the party moving for summary judgment has to email and file on the docket for us to see a pre-motion letter to Judge Torres explaining to her the basis for its anticipated motion for summary judgment and attaching the opposing party's response to the statement which will show whether and which material facts the parties agree on. Then the party opposing summary judgment has to email to Judge Torres and file on the docket a letter explaining why it is opposing the motion. After that, Judge Torres will review everything and inform the parties whether a motion for summary judgment is warranted, and if so, set a briefing schedule for the filing of the motions. Only then can the motions be filed. Now, the parties are submitting a proposed schedule this Friday, and it's technically possible that the parties will agree to waive the requirements of pre-motion letters and the exchange of statements of facts. I have to think that Ripple, Brad, and Chris would want to waive these requirements and will be pushing very hard for a faster schedule. But with the SEC delaying this case at every turn, you must wonder if the SEC would ever agree to this waiver and make this battle less cumbersome or faster for anyone, even for Judge Torres. Even if the parties agree to waive the requirements, Judge Torres has to agree to that waiver. On top of all this, remember that expert discovery has been reopened until May 13th for the Mets deposition and the filing of the Ripple Defendants' Supplemental Rebuttal Report. Also, he says, I expect that the parties will challenge some of the other parties as experts, although I expect that to be part of the summary judgment process. The amicus briefs also have to be reviewed. The point is that all of this adds to the time it will take for Judge Torres to make a decision because those challenges have to be decided. All of this is very complicated and will be slower than we want. I don't want you to be disappointed when the briefing schedule comes out. I don't think that we will see a schedule that contemplates briefing beginning in June. I think that a more realistic timeline for summary judgment motions would be opening briefs in either July or August, and then all briefing completed by either October or November. The issue of the Hinman documents and emails is still being decided, but I think the decision on that would be made while the summary judgment motions are pending, which is why I believe the Ripple defendants have said they are prepared to go forward on summary judgment before that issue is decided. And for reference, Judge Torres recently issued a summary judgment ruling in a complicated case involving gender discrimination claims against Goldman Sachs. The briefing in that case was completed last November, and the decision was issued in mid-March of this year. The point is that this is a complicated case, and it will continue to take time. More time than we want, end. So, there you have his take, and you can see just the number of, not weeks, not days, but months that could still be ahead of us in this process. It is going to be lengthy. We already expected something later in the year, but this just goes to show that it really could be end of the year. It could even push into next year as a potential additional outcome, depending on the timing 
of everything that we're seeing here. There is a lot to be resolved. There are a lot of documents to be filed. There's still yet a lot of back and forth to be had between the SEC and Ripple, and you know at this point that they are not really in the mode of cooperating with each other. They have had a very hard time being able to get on the same page with many things, even things that we might otherwise have felt were simple or could have been easily resolved. So all that being said, this, just like everything else here in the crypto space, is going to require some patience and it's going to take some time. So do be patient understand that it's playing out in the legal avenues and maybe just maybe we see a settlement uh but a settlement's not guaranteed here and we know that ripple is very committed to getting a resolution that provides them clarity and the sec may not be willing to provide a settlement that gives them the clarity that they want in which case ripple could be very well incentivized to see this thing all the way through. So there you have it. I'll link everything down below for you to reference. Uh, that way you can see his take here and some of the commentary around it. Uh, others like Jeremy Hogan have already pitched in their thoughts and feedback as well. So check out their responses on Twitter. Also, I hope that you found this information to be helpful. If you did, hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps the channel a ton and make sure you get the information most important to you. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on all the latest news and updates and check out some of those links down in the video description. If you feel like supporting the channel, there's a lot of good opportunities in there. Thank you so much for spending some of your time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.